Okay, we have an interesting problem here today. We've got one plus x equals x, natural log one over x, and we just want to solve for a value for x. And for this one, I'm going to be looking for real solutions. I want a real value for x. Now, there's probably a few different ways to do this. I think maybe the graph is nice. I'm not really sure about other algebra methods, but what I did on this was I wanted to use the Lambert W function to see if we can figure this out. So to get started with this, I want to actually rearrange this and try to get try to isolate x and try to use, I really want to use this first one here, this definition for our Lambert W function. If you're not familiar with the Lambert W function or you need some more information, I have a couple playlists on this. I can provide a link to that. I have a couple introduction videos and some different resources on this. So let me provide a link in the description. You can kind of get some more information. For this one, we're just going to kind of use these definitions we have here, particularly the first one. And this one here is going to be useful as well. So first, let me take this and let's just subtract an x on both sides so that we have x ln 1 over x minus x. And then I'll factor out an x here. So we have x ln 1 over x minus 1. Now, as far as using the Lambert W function, you'll notice for both these formulas, we have an e in it. And we don't really have an e here, although technically we have natural log. But what I want to do in order to just create this e here for x, we can use this trick that we can write x as e ln x. So let me just do that and kind of reorder. I'll bring it, I'm going to write this x over here as e ln x. And now we're kind of getting to this where this doesn't actually have to be x. It just has to be something that we're plugging in here. But we need the same value as the coefficient and the exponent. So for this part here, we would like this to be like this. One thing I can do instead of writing natural log 1 over x, we can write this as natural log x. And think of this as x to the minus 1, and then with the log properties, we can bring that out front and write it as minus ln x minus 1. But then let's just multiply minus 1 on both sides here. Multiply minus 1 here. That way, distributing minus 1 in here, I can just write these as pluses or ln x plus 1, get rid of this. And then we're really close to kind of having the same thing here. We have the ln x, we just need this plus 1. What I can do, we have minus 1 here. Let's rewrite this. If I just take this, if I multiply in an e here, we can look at this as e to the 1, and then I'm creating this plus 1. So we'll do the same thing over here, squeeze it in on my left side too. So then the left just becomes minus e, copy this stuff down, and then with exponent properties, this becomes e ln x plus 1. But now we're all set up for this formula right here. Now we've got the same coefficient and exponent. What I can do is just take the Lambert W on both sides here. Take Lambert W here. I didn't plan my space very well, but we'll take Lambert W on the left side as well. And then using this formula, when you have it set up, you just take this and that's going to be the solution for this thing. So the right side of our equation is going to be the same thing as natural log x plus 1. So let me just try to make this clear, get a little space up here. So taking the value of this to be ln x plus 1, we can rewrite it up here as ln x plus 1 is equal to the left side of the equation, which is just Lambert W minus E. But now we're getting pretty close to isolating our x value. I can subtract a 1 on both sides here, so that goes away. And then in order to isolate our x, we can just use the log properties and say x is going to be equal to E to this thing, which is... Lambert W minus E minus 1. But for this minus 1 here, I can separate this off and think of it as E to the minus 1. But E to the minus 1 is like 1 over E, so let's bring it down here into the denominator. One frustrating part of this problem is just this W minus E because it's really close to letting us use the Lambert W function again. If you had something like, just notice if you had Lambert W, I'll write the minus sign as minus 1. And if this happened to be minus 1, then you could use the formula again and say this is minus 1. But unfortunately with Lambert W, like close is not good enough. Like you can't, there's no property that I know about that allows me to take that minus out or force this to work. So even though it's close, we can't really manually do anything with this without a calculator. But what I can do on this, which is only a little bit helpful, it's not that great, but you can use this formula to try to clean it up a little bit. So what I want to do is to get it in this form, let's just multiply in this part right here. So I'll multiply in Lambert minus E, and then I want to do the same exact thing. So I'm not changing it, right? So we'll do it here in the denominator. And then now we can apply this formula, which says 
when we have Lambert of something, E Lambert something, we just get back the something. So in this case, the something is gonna be just this minus E. So for this numerator, we get our minus E over Lambert W minus E over E, but then I can cancel E's here. And so for my value of X, we just have minus one over Lambert W minus E. And this right here, this is a kind of a solution, maybe not that satisfying, but this is one way to represent this solution. Now what we wanna do is we wanna kind of evaluate this. We said originally that we want real solutions for this, and we'd kind of like to see some numeric values, not something in terms of the Lambert W. So let's just take a look at the graph on this and see if we can get a little more information about this. Okay, now we have a rough sketch of the Lambert W function over here to the right. And I wanted to be kind of careful about this because I have this separated right here. We have the main branch of the Lambert W function in blue. And then we have this other part here in red. The reason for this is to have a function, it should only return one value for every X value. So the problem we would have if we included this whole curve is like, let's say some point right in here. This actually has two values, right? Because you're gonna have some value right here that's gonna return. And then you're gonna have another value over here that's gonna return this value. So in order for this to be a function, we just kind of cut it off right here at this minus one value. And then in that way, for all X values that intersect this blue curve, we just have one solution. But the thing to notice in this region right here, there is gonna be two real solutions to this. You're gonna have the solution in blue on the main branch, and then you're gonna have this other branch that's gonna give a second real solution. And this is gonna be true here from zero to this value minus one over E. I tried to line it up so you can see like this point right here, the X value on this is gonna be minus one over E, which is something like minus 0.367. Now, the nice thing about this graph is all we need to do is just assess our input into the Lambert W function. And then we can tell just from the graph if we have one real solution, which is going to be everything positive, two real solutions, just in this little sliver between zero and minus one over E. And all the way out here, anything less than minus one over E for our input, that's going to be no real solutions out this way. So in order to evaluate our answer and try to do something with this, we just need to look at minus E. Well, E is something like 2.718, so this is gonna be something like minus 2.718. And so this X value right here is gonna be clearly like off this curve. It's gonna be less than this minus one over E. It's gonna be somewhere out here. And so this is gonna give us no real solutions to this. So kind of a disappointing result. You could also see this clearly if you do look at a graph, you graph these separately, you'll see there's no intersection point between these two curves. So that's kind of another way to do this. Now you may actually be wondering about the complex solutions and you can find those on Wolfram Alpha. One thing you could do, you can get a value for this, right? You could put in, in Wolfram Alpha, you could enter this as just product log of minus E. And this will give you a complex solution. Of course, it's gonna be in the denominator minus one. So you have to do another step to get an X value. But there's actually gonna be an infinite number of these because you can also enter in all these different branches. So in Wolfram Alpha, if you just enter product log, this is gonna assume the branch is gonna be zero. But if you wanna specify a branch, and like I said, I think there's an infinite number, you could just put it in this first spot, do it like product log seven minus E, let's say. And that's gonna give you another complex solution. But of course, you could just keep going. You could do eight, you can do nine. Another common one, this branch right here in Wolfram Alpha, I believe is minus one. So you could try that one, but that's just gonna be another complex solution. So you can mess around with that and get a bunch of complex solutions. But as far as getting a solution and the real numbers, unfortunately, again, no real solutions. Okay, that's it for today. Thanks everyone for watching. Have a good day.